The Pennsylvania Game is made possible in part by... The Pennsylvania Public Television Network. Five Pennsylvania governors, William Bigler, William Packer, Andrew Curtin, James Beaver, and Daniel Hastings, have one thing in common. Was it A, all were newspaper editors, B, all were attorneys, C, all were Civil War officers, or D, all were from Belfont? The answer is D, all five lived in Belfont. In addition to these five Pennsylvania governors, Belfont was also home to John Bigler, a governor of California, and to Robert Walker, a governor of Kansas. Two more reasons to call Belfont a home of governors. In 1999, Pittsburgh Magazine named Mario Lemieux Pittsburgher of the Year. That same year, he became the first professional athlete to own a major league franchise. What does the French name Lemieux mean? A, the cat, B, the rock, C, the best, or D, the bad C. The answer is C, the best. Super Mario has lived up to his name. Revered as one of hockey's best all-time players, Lemieux's career spanned 13 seasons. He led the Pittsburgh Penguins to two Stanley Cup championships, won six NHL scoring titles, and three Hart trophies. Mario's career was temporarily sidelined in 1993 when he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease. Following surgery and radiation therapy, Lemieux made his comeback, finishing the 1993-94 season with the NHL scoring title. Health issues forced the Hall of Famer to retire the following season. But again in 1999, he returned to the Penguins, this time in the front office. Lemieux and his partnership bought the Penguins, rescuing the team from certain bankruptcy. Super Mario Lemieux became the first pro athlete to own a major league franchise. Matthias William Baldwin was trained as a jeweler, but later became a toolmaker and inventor. When the Philadelphia Museum asked him to make a model of something, his work was so successful that Baldwin established his own company. During his lifetime, he sold more than 1,500 of his products throughout the United States, except in the South, where they were boycotted because he was an abolitionist. What did Baldwin make? A, pipe organs, B, railroad locomotives, C, pianos, or D, long-range artillery? The answer is B, railroad locomotives. In 1832, Matthias Baldwin built Old Ironsides, Pennsylvania's first locomotive, and went on to establish what became the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia. It built more locomotives than any other company in the world and exported them to 78 countries. His engines could carry more steam pressure than any others then available. The company thrived in Philadelphia for almost a century, closing in 1926. The Pennsylvania Game debuted on Pennsylvania Public Television in 1986. Who was the show's original host? A. Bernie Asbell B. Lynn Hines C. Wendy Williams or D. Lynn Cullen The answer is B. Lynn Hines. Lynn Hines created and hosted the first five seasons of the Pennsylvania Game which debuted on Pennsylvania Public Television in 1986. Formerly a Pittsburgh television personality, Hines joined the faculty at Penn State in 1984 in its broadcast cable major. He left Penn State in 1991 and moved on to West Virginia University. In 1997, he became director of graduate studies at Drury University in Springfield, Missouri. My faith. Beginning in 1992, Lynn Cullen, a Pittsburgh talk show host and a panelist on earlier shows, hosted the Pennsylvania game and continued as host for three seasons. Lynn continues her radio and TV work in Pittsburgh. Bernie Asbell never hosted the show, but for years was Lynn Hines' right-hand man. As for Wendy Williams, this is the first time I've actually appeared on the show, although I've been the voice of the program since it debuted in 1986. 
In 1948, the nominating conventions of all three parties, the Republican, Democratic, and Progressive parties, were held in Philadelphia. It marked the first time in history that conventions were broadcast on TV. Which of the following is not true? A, there were only 350,000 TVs in America at the time. B, seven inch black and white viewing screens cost 150 to 200 dollars. C, at the time, only 18 cities had TV stations. Or D, the oppressive heat in the auditorium caused Thomas Dewey to faint on camera during his acceptance speech. The answer is D. Republican presidential nominee Thomas Dewey didn't faint on camera during his acceptance speech, but he well could have in Philadelphia's crowded convention hall made hotter from the newsreel and TV lights. Although television was invented before World War II, only about 350,000 Americans had receiving sets in 1948. Only 18 cities had TV stations, and they offered very little original programming. Network owners, who also manufactured TV sets, hoped the history-making event would get people to buy the $150 to $200 black and white sets. Others found it hard to believe that anyone would sit at home and watch little pictures in a box. But television was transforming politics in ways nobody ever dreamed of. And it was doing it right there, live from Philadelphia. In 1938, the Boys Association of Ashland, Pennsylvania, donated and erected a monument that's one of a kind. The memorial located in Schuylkill County was erected in honor of what group? A, coal miners, B, mothers, C, firemen, or D, the Molly Maguires. The answer is B, Mothers. In 1938, the Mothers Monument, the only one of its kind, was donated and erected by the Ashland Boys Association in the borough of Ashland, Schuylkill County. This inspirational monument to motherhood is based on the famous Whistler's Mother portrait and sits at the top of a steep set of stairs surrounded by a small park perfect for reflecting on the debt of gratitude owed to those who bore and raised us. George Westinghouse was one of the greatest engineers, industrialists, and inventors of his time. In 1869, he invented the air brake, which revolutionized the railroad industry, and at the age of 22, founded the Westinghouse Air Brake Company in Pittsburgh. His ideas changed the world. In 1871, Westinghouse became the first company in America to do what? A, reduce the work week by a half day on Saturday. B, establish a company-sponsored employee pension plan. C, establish literacy standards and provide on-the-job tutoring. Or D, build a ventilation system designed to improve air quality for workers. The answer is A. In 1871, Westinghouse Air Brake Company became the first company in America to allow workers to take off half of Saturday. It could be said that George Westinghouse invented the weekend. Westinghouse was one of the greatest engineers, industrialists, and inventors of his time. During his lifetime, he obtained nearly 400 patents and started 60 companies that employed some 50,000 workers. At his peak, he was the largest private employer in industrial history. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.